and welcome to the Week in Review, the show that brings you up to date on the week that was. Here are the top stories. The Reserve Bank hikes rates and also tightens rules for home loans. Manufacturing speeds up in October with services also accelerating. And Peach and Umbarum plays down differences on intelligence sharing with the U.S. We begin with the RBI's rate hikes. On Tuesday, the central bank increased its two key policy rates for the sixth time this year. The repo rate is up 25 basis points to 6.25 percent, and the reverse repo has also been hiked by 25 basis points to 5.25. The repo is the rate at which the RBI lends to banks, while the reverse repo is the rate at which the RBI absorbs extra cash. What the RBI has left untouched is the cash reserve ratio, which is still at 6 percent. The CRR is, of course, the percentage of deposits that banks have to keep with the RBI. And the RBI has also tightened India's mortgage rules. Most significantly, the standard asset provision on teaser rates for home loans has been hiked to 2 percent from the current 0.4. But that's not all. To prevent over-leveraging, it has fixed the limit for loan-to-value ratio in home loans at 80 percent. It has also hiked the risk weight for home loans worth 75 lakh and above to 125 percent. And in corporate news, ExxonMobil might sell its stake in an Angolan oil field to a consortium of Indian companies. ONGC's overseas arm OVL is looking to team up with three other government-run oil companies to buy Exxon's share of the deepwater field. Exxon's 25 percent stake is currently worth some $2 billion. And one of those companies OVL wants to partner with is looking at an overseas acquisition of its own. On Wednesday, government-run firm Gale said it was in talks to pick up a stake in Australia's Advent Energy. But three of the co-owners of Advent later issued separate statements denying any formal negotiations. Advent is an oil and gas exploration company based out of Perth, and Gale is India's biggest gas marketing and transmission firm. Also on Gale, the company reported its second quarter numbers this week. Net profit climbed 30 percent to 924 crores, and revenue also gained 30 percent to more than 8,000. And in other news, India's automakers have reported record-breaking sales for October. Maruti Suzuki sold more than 100,000 units, an increase of 50 percent, and Hyundai sales jumped 22 percent to about 35,000 vehicles. And two-wheeler companies have also done well. Hero Honda sales went up 43 percent to about half a million, and TVS posted a 45 percent hike in sales. Auto sales have been boosted by the festive season buying, and the analysts expect that momentum to continue well into November. And not surprisingly, overall manufacturing in India has picked up in October. The HSBC Market Purchasing Managers Index climbed 57.2 compared to September's 55.1. Any figure greater than 50 on the index means a rise, and October is the 19th straight month of such gains. Meanwhile, services have also accelerated. The business activity index for October stood at 56.2. In September, it was at 55.6. And here are some stories in brief. Home Minister P. Chidambaram has tried to end the India-U.S. war of words on intelligence sharing. On Monday, he said the issue of alleged terrorist David Headley was being blown out of proportion. Chidambaram added that the U.S. had shared intelligence with India in the months leading up to the Mumbai attacks. But he also said it made no mention of Headley until October of 2009. Future Group Chairman Kishore Biani says his e-commerce business is growing faster than expected. Biani told Mint that group company Pantaloon's new digital platform was likely to hit revenues of 1,000 crores within 15 months. That's instead of the earlier projection of two to three years. Last month, Pantaloon started selling its products via telephone and the Internet. And Coal India made a bumper debut on the markets on Friday. Its stock shot up 40 percent on the BSE to 342 rupees and 35 pesi. That price gives Coal India a market value of some $49 billion. Chairman Partha Bhattacharya later described the stock surge as a Diwali gift. And that's all we have for you this week. Thanks for watching and have a happy Diwali.